When we left off, we were in Eridura on Costa Rica's Pacific coast, provisioning for a long passage. Looks like you uncleaned it in now? Yeah, it should be good to go. Yeah. Good morning. Morning. One of the things we wanted to do before we set off on our long 4,000 plus mile passage to Hawaii is do a little bit of sail maintenance. Nothing too major and really nothing with the actual sail. It's all mostly stitching on the UV cover. There's some little spots where some stitching has come undone few little tears and wear, but all in the UV cover. So we're gonna drop the sail at anchor here, take that down, I can redo the stitching, maybe put a few little patches on the UV cover and get us all nice and fixed up so we don't have any issues while we're sailing. To drop our roller furling headsail, we unfurl it, take out the stopper from the foil, loosen the halyard, and then slowly lower and flake the sail on deck as we pull the bolt rope out of the foil. Hang on, I'm on this side, so you can pull back that way. Well, it didn't go as smoothly as we hoped. It's like the furling drum is stuck 10, 15 feet down on the foil there, so Ty's gonna go up the mast, check it out, see what it's stuck on. It looks like it might be twisted a little bit. But we've been meaning to go up the mast before we left anyway, so I guess now is as good a time as any. To go up the mast, we use climbing gear, specifically a harness, daisy chain webbing, ascenders, a long loop of webbing, a few Dyneema loops, and locking carabiners. This is how we do our safety line right here. This is just a prusik loop. We're using a piece of Dyneema that I've got looped off with a double sheet bend. Uh, yeah, there could be better ways, but this should be pretty secure. I don't know, we're not a climber, but I think that's pretty secure. And then I'll just slide this up as I go. It'll act as a safety if there's any tension on it. So this is my <coughs> foot one here from my ascender. And then I just grab the halyard up and pull myself up to the next one. The only thing that's uncomfortable is the, uh, the harness. The harness. So the quicker the better. And then I slide my safety up here as I go. And just keeps that up, keeps a bit of tension on it. Away you go. Oh yeah. Oh my hat. Oh. Here we are. Up about as far as I need to go right now. Check everything else on the connectors and stuff while we're up here, but I'm trying to find out why this is uh, stuck here. So this is the the top part of the furling drum here. You can see it spins around. And I think it's hooked on the joint of the foil shaft. There's obviously not one piece of foil that's whatever length this is, 55 feet long. Try and get myself out there so I can look at it. Yeah, so I can't budge it. It's like wedged in good or something. I'm gonna need like the flurry, probably need the mallet. Okay, let's pull the halyard. Okay, it's free. Okay. All right, so it's stuck on the set screw here. So I need you to send me up some Allen keys. Okay. See if I can show everyone here the problem of what it got stuck on. So this here, one of the little set screws holding the foil in and it's not flush. See that? And that's what's catching this foil as it goes down. Easy as. Look at that. Bang. Probably needs a bit of lock tight in it actually if it's coming loose like that. Yeah, it's past it. That's it. That's it for me up here for now. A little bit of bird poop up here. But pretty clean. I'm not gonna go to the top right now. I'm not gonna come up and get everything clean. But uh, from what I see just everything's good, it's just really dirty, a lot of dust that you get off the offshore. And uh, it's a busy, it's a, what is it, a Sunday here, so everyone's out. 
and all the fishing boats are out. Marina Los Sueños is a fancy marina, part of the large resort here. While it's sometimes possible for private boats to go in and fuel, the marina caters exclusively to the sport fishing charter boats. Every day, there's a parade of boats that head out in the morning, bringing tourists several miles offshore to get that prize catch and then return in the evening. With the problem fixed, it was easy to drop the sail the rest of the way and time for me to get to work. Well, I am using our awesome tool we have, the Speedy Stitcher, to do some of the tougher stitching on the sail first. Uh, once I get to some of the easier stuff, I'll go to the machine. Right now, near the bottom of the sail here on the leech, it's quite thick, um, especially on the bottom. That bottom corner has a few extra layers. But it's too much for a sewing machine to go through, but little speedy stitcher does a great job. It's just very, very slow, one stitch at a time. With a shade cover set up, I stitched and stitched away. Not a hard job, but a very slow, tedious job. The Speedy Stitch is a great tool, which is like an awl, but with an integrated bobbin, allowing you to make lock stitches by hand. I think whoever named this the Speedy Stitcher will be charged with false advertising. It is not a Speedy Stitcher. It's an easy stitcher, maybe, Easy lock stitcher, but not speedy at all. It's just starting to calm down now. It gets really a little bit choppy here in the Arvo. There's a southern breeze coming through, and you get all these big uh, boats coming back in, all the big fishing motorboats heading back in, and the wake just kind of rolls in here for a while. A little fishing bed over here though with a bunch of birds picking up the scraps and the question that we get asked quite often is how often do you see the wizard okay it's not exactly what we get asked but i was just going to ask you guys let's check out what what is behind behind the curtain let's see what's going on uh, what's going on here sail wrestling oh sail wrestling yeah really fun. So what have you got here? Is this your sail loft? Yeah, we made a little sail loft, which you had a great idea, Ty. And I'm that that's that's me. <laughs> saying how I need like we were talking about putting the sail in the cockpit to sew so I could have a bit of shade, but I was saying how it's really nice to have this nice flat area, like it's like a big table, but I always have to sit hunched over at the machine. You had the genius idea that I could stand in the hatch on the beaver and have the machine right here. It's like my own sail loft. It's pretty cool. So I think we should patent that. I don't know, there's probably already people doing that all the time, but yeah, seems to work pretty well. We've got a nice foredeck here with a bit of flat space. Sewing machine sits right up there, plugged in below. Definitely more than a one day project. Yes. Well, we got a bit of a late start. We didn't have a super early start. We had the little hiccup bringing the sail down. Been working on a few other things today, talking to some people about crewing for the sail from Hawaii back to Pacific Northwest, which by the time this comes out, we'll be, we'll be in Hawaii getting ready to set sail. So right here, this is, this material is a material called Top Gun, which is kind of like a sunbrella, but it's much more chafe resistant. And right here, this section of the sail is where our spreader is. And there's already a little patch reinforcing it, um, but it wasn't quite in the exact right spot. So I'm putting a patch down and also reinforcing it because it was already wearing through that. Um, it will add a bit of weight to the sail, but it's better than chafing through the sail. So this kind of like off-white color, that's where there was a, a spreader patch on there. It's kind of like been something that's been stuck to the sail. I don't know, it was done before, before we had the boat, um, but it's gotten quite old underneath. It has quite a bit of wear on it, starting to wear through, and there's some spots below it that have also worn through. So sewing this on, um, and hopefully it should be good. 
we end up staying on Veruna within the next few months here, depending on what happens, we will be thinking about possibly replacing the sails somewhere in the near future. So I don't know if anyone has any recommendations for sail makers, but that's something that we'll be looking for sometime soon, possibly. has been slow progress on the sail stitching. Just haven't been able to get the machine to go through the edge, the leech of the sail very well. Um, been doing a lot of it, like hand cranking it, which is really wearing out my arm and my wrist. Um, sometimes I can kind of get the machine to work, but it just doesn't seem to want to go all the way through it. I don't know if it's just too tough of a material. It's not that thick, but it is very hard, but Sheen is giving us troubles. As I finished up with the stitching on the sail, we moved on to a few other projects we had on the list. Before we set off on this long passage, of course there are a lot of projects, things on the to-do list, things to check and check off. Today, Ty is up the mast, somewhere up there doing a good inspection of the rigging and also giving it a little clean just so we know everything's looking good. Although this is one of the more protected anchorages we've been in in Costa Rica, none of the anchorages that we've been in have really been flat, nice, calm all the time. There's usually always a little bit of a roll in here um, as with most places we've been, so it doesn't make it fun for going up the mast. Tell us what you're doing up there. Whoa. Whoa. Getting thrown around the place. Um, inspecting the they cotter pins. What are the name of these pins? I forget. Yeah, I think they're cotter pins. They're a type of cotter pin. I forget what type of pin these are. Uh, one of them's just creeped out a little bit, so I was just pushing it back through, and I'm gonna put a turn on it, clean it off some of the surface rust off the rigging, rolling around. I ended up with, I don't know if we talked about yet. We have a non-working bilge pump, sump pump. It's not, uh, it's not our bilge, so that's not super important. Uh, it's a pump that is in a separate sump we have for the uh, head area, which is basically the shower and the sink in there. But it'd be good to have it working so we can use that sink or shower if we need to. And on top of that, it's good to have that as a backup bilge pump if we needed one. We have a couple of others on board too, but I think the more bilge pumps the better in that. <laughs> now we just tested it out. Pump's still working. It looks like it's the float switch, which I think is what goes wrong on them quite a bit. So we've got the float switch with us. We're going to take it up to the marine shop here, which doesn't have much, but I feel like that's something that should be pretty common for all these little boats. They probably have a float switch and a uh, bilge pump assembly. We'll, we'll see. Well, once we look a little out of place, we're here at what's kind of called like the Whole Foods of Costa Rica, the Water Mercado, very fancy little grocery store. We took an Uber up here because we got gas cans and they don't like this on the bus. Yeah, the bus here does not allow uh, propane and doesn't allow gas. We've stuck on a couple of times. It's basically. probably like most Western places yeah. in the US, they wouldn't let you Mexico, they do not care though. They let you get away with a lot of things. So now it's a big petrol. Filling fuel is one of those pesky tasks on board that just has to be done. Most places we travel, there aren't fuel docks to pull up to, so we end up bringing our jerry cans ashore to top up the tanks. Even if there is a fuel dock or local fuel delivery service available, we tend to opt for this anyways, as we have found you can end up paying quite a high premium for the convenience versus the regular gas station price. Since we use our engine very rarely, it's pretty easy for us to fill up a couple of jerry cans every few months. Medio lleno. Is that right? Yeah. Medio lleno. With our jerry cans full, we ordered an Uber for the short, couple of mile ride back down to the beach. Right, Costa Rica. Bueno. 
Uber is relatively new here in Costa Rica and not available everywhere, but we sure appreciated having it today. Thanks so much for watching and a huge thanks to our patrons who support the continued making of these videos. If you enjoyed watching, please consider becoming a patron and don't forget to give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. Until next time, adios!